I think that everyone at some point in their lives experiences the feelings of grief and the pain that goes with it. How do we best handle that and respond to those experiences? It's an important question, and it's one we're going to look at today. I'm Jonathan Yelland, and this is Finding the Point. Hey, welcome to the show. It's great to have you guys with us on Finding the Point today. Of course, we have with us Pastor Aaron Mudge as well. And uh, Pastor, as I bring you on here, I know uh, your church recently has been especially dealing with this topic of grief, as I know there's been several beloved members of the congregation who've uh, departed for heaven. And, um, well, I I just want to say to you and to your congregation that uh, I feel for you guys and, um, you know, I'm supporting you as well. Thank you, John. That's that's much appreciated. Yeah, like you said, it's kind of all at once here. We had a couple loved ones from the church uh, that went home to be with the Lord. And uh, we have many that are, are dealing with the the emotions that come with that and, and the, the grief and trying to work through that. And so uh, I felt this would be an appropriate topic for us to cover and discuss. Yeah. And, you know, I as, as I'd heard about it and heard about, uh, you know, some of these these just pillars of the community who who've been lost, um, I kind of wanted to interrupt our regular upload schedule to uh, do an episode here Um just in the hopes that maybe we can help some of the people over there who are are suffering and and dealing with those challenges but also it's not unique just to you guys now you guys are especially feeling it right now but i think it the concept of of grief is universal everyone faces that at some point and just being able to handle grief in a way that honors God and and is healthy mentally and is good for everyone. I just think that's an important thing. And so I thought it would be worth taking our time to look at today. I agree completely. And it's one of those things that, you know, as Christians, when our loved ones uh, leave this world, we understand that if they're saved, they know Jesus is their savior, then they're going to be in heaven. And so in one sense where we rejoice because we're happy for them, but I think too many Christians have this idea of, well, we, we have to be happy for them. So we can't be sad. We can't mourn. That's, we shouldn't do that. And that's one of the things we wanted to address because I think too many, even Christians have a wrong view of grief and, and maybe go into denial even a little bit of, Mm. Uh, oh, I, I can't deal with this. I can't be sad. I, I've, you know, there are Christians out there that have told people, no, you shouldn't cry. You can't be sad. That's no, that's, that's what we want to talk about because I, I believe the Bible teaches that that's not the case, that we should, it's okay to be sad and to grieve. And it's also okay to be happy for our loved ones because they're in a better place. Well, yeah, I, I think it's certainly a lot more complex than a simple solution that someone might share or f- or hear about um so let's do it pastor now i know you you gave us uh let me see if i can bring them up for you uh we've got the powerpoint that's kind of got our big three questions for dealing with the concept of grief um go ahead yeah so as we talk about grief here the main three things we want to get to today is why do we experience grief how should a christian grieve and how should we respond to grief and as i said these are important things for us to look at. And so uh, why don't we start with you, John, and look at why do we experience grief? Yeah. um, You know, I think it's something that a lot of people don't give thought and consideration to. Like, why am I actually feeling what I'm feeling? I mean, on the surface, it just makes sense, right? Um, You know, you lose someone you love, of course, those feelings would be natural. Um, but from a more sort of analytical perspective on how our thoughts work, um, grief is a re- is an emotion. So it's a, a reflex. We've talked about that before, uh, how an emotion yeah. is something that's reflexive. So uh, what causes that reflex to occur? Like, you know, you hit your thumb, it hurts and your hand pulls away, right? Like that's a reflex. So what's the hammer hitting your thumb in the, in the sense of grief? Um, and so essentially the 
the thing that causes grief is loss. Loss of something that's valued. So the reason we experience grief is tied to the reasons for how we value something. So if we have lost someone, that grief will be a reflex that occurs because we valued the person that was lost. And it should happen. It's important, actually, that we recognize that the grief should happen when someone we value is lost. Um, I think a good example, Aaron, f that I'd have for this is um, when I, one of the, the early jobs I had um, when I was working for um, the Christian school um, and the church there that I was working with, uh, they, of course, you know, and I don't know if our audience knows or not, but I've got a pretty strong music background, and so I, I lead songs occasionally. And they'd asked me to lead the songs for the funeral service of just a, a very beloved saint from our church who had died and was well loved by everyone. Um, and at that funeral, like it was, the whole auditorium was just packed full of people and you know we sang the songs and we led the songs but they were all crying and very grief stricken but um, I really wasn't now I had an appropriate sobriety and somberness to my countenance and you know I felt for the pain that the people in the audience were going through but I didn't know the man and even though he was a great spiritual warrior for our, our church and community and that was well loved by everyone, um, it wasn't by me. I just started to work there. I didn't know this person. And because I didn't know him, I did not have a high level of value for him right. because he, I hadn't had that relationship. Without that relationship, his loss did not produce an emotional response of grief. But, Aaron, let me tell you, uh, when my grandfather died, it was a different story. Yeah. Because that's somebody who I did know, somebody who I did have a very high value for. And when I, I lost him, that was grief. And yeah. so to answer the question of why do we experience grief, we experience grief because we value someone and they are lost. I think that's important that you're saying uh, on value. I don't think we think of it that way. Sometimes we just think, well, well I'm experiencing loss, but it, it's something that because it is valued, that's why we experience the grief. So if we are not experiencing grief, that, that would mean that, that that person or that thing was not of value to us. So to deny grief and say, nope, I can't, I can't grief, I can't cry, I can't mourn, you're actually um devaluing that person like you're you're saying well i didn't really value them i didn't really love them yeah you're you're either you're either removing the value from that person you're saying you know they weren't actually as valuable as i always thought i don't actually need them uh you know they're not you know you're either distancing yourself from their value or you're denying the loss and you're saying this person is not lost from me, the separation isn't real, something like that, which is in contrast to reality, which is very, very not mentally healthy right. at all. It's really bad for you to live in that kind of denial. And um, simply when grieving for the loss of someone, it is an expression of love. It is an expression of my love and, and as you say, value for that person. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that you really are strongly expressing love when you show your grief because you're at, in, in an appropriate way. Um, yeah, you it know. Can, go, can go too far the other way and wailing and moaning and, and gnashing of teeth is the uh, the King James Bible would put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, Aaron, that, that kind of goes into your next question. Um, and I guess I can put it, put that PowerPoint back up. But um, how should a Christian grieve? So we're going to experience this grief because we have people that we value. And they will be lost. Valuable things will be lost. Valuable people will be lost. And we'll experience the grief that comes with the loss of someone that we love and value and, and care about. But there should be a correct way to respond to that. So if you want to tackle that... I'll just yeah. put you on screen and go ahead. 
So if we're going to ask the question, how should a Christian grieve, uh, the, the authority of faith and practice in our lives should be the Bible. That's right. So I want to go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14, if you would bring that up for us. Sure thing. Here you go. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others have which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So a couple of things I wanted to bring out about this passage is that uh, Paul is, is speaking to the believers at Thessalonica, and he's wanting to encourage them that uh, when a believer dies and a believer leaves this, this life, mm-hmm. in fact, in the New Testament, uh, generally it refers to that as sleep. The idea being that you fall asleep in this world and you wake up in, in the presence of, of God. But and so he doesn't want them to be ignorant, but he says, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, we sorrow not. Now, the problem is a lot of believers, they say, okay, See, it says, ye sorrow not. So we shouldn't sorrow, we shouldn't cry, we shouldn't be sad. But it's actually, that's taking it out of context, because it continues, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So it's okay, it's not saying don't sorrow at all, it's saying don't sorrow like those that don't have any hope. And there's a difference. There's a big difference between those that, that don't have the hope of seeing their loved one again, that don't have the hope that their loved one is in a better place. And and when I say hope, I don't mean, boy, I don't know, but I'm sure hope that they're there. It, the, ho- the idea of hope here is it's, it's an assurance that's, yep, I, I know that that's what it's going to be, and it gives me hope. Yeah, um, and that that idea of um, having hope, we, we recognize that there is loss, but it's not the end of loss or the, it's not lost forever for those of us who, right. you know, have a future in heaven to look forward to. Yeah. And, and so we, we need to make sure. And, and as he says, uh, those that, that have no hope, um, one of the things to remember is in, in the context of, of the time period that the Jewish people, the, the Eastern culture there, uh, mourning was something that was taken very seriously. And, you know, if you've read the Bible at all, you've, it, it talks about the, the rending of clothes and uh, mm-hmm. ashes on the head. In fact, yeah. in some cases, and we see this in the, the Gospels, in some cases they would actually hire mourners, uh, usually women, uh, to come and to wail and to mourn and to cry and to carry yeah. on to show that that person is valued yeah, and loved. Because in, in their culture, they recognize this concept that we do have, we do show value for someone when their loss affects grief, which I think this is the other side of the coin, but we can, but we are talking about how, um, how to, how to like respond correctly. So um, I think you can overdo it too. You can, yes. you can ham it up almost and in a way where you're, you're trying to, you know, express more grief than is appropriate to the situation, which I think some people might do that for attention or, or possibly they think that will like get them favor with people or something. I'm not sure it would depend on the individual in the situation and what the real cause is for it. But um, I think when we're we're looking at the question of um, how should a Christian grieve, my thoughts on it, and I'm shifting more from the theological that that we're just you're discussing to the practical. You know, I'm at the funeral. What should we do? Well, actually, that's the first thing. Uh, first thing, you need to have a funeral. So the first thing, you actually do need to grieve. Yeah. You need to have a time to get together with other people who have value for that person, other people who are experiencing the loss that you are experiencing, and grieve together. Um, it helps to have other people to support you. It helps to reflect the shared love that you have for that person who we have lost. Um, 
And so the first step is actually to make sure that you get together and grieve. I've heard some people who say, oh, I don't want to have a funeral. Or when I die, I don't want my kids to get together and have a funeral and I'll be sad and upset. That's very selfish. Okay. And I, and I apologies to anyone who, um, you know, I'm not trying to pick on anybody with that, but it is selfish because those people need to get together and they need to have a time to experience the loss and the grief that comes with it and confront it. Does yeah, that make absolutely. sense, Pastor Aaron? Yeah, it does. In fact, I, I actually have a practical just example of that in my life. Um, yeah, my, go ahead. my grandmother, my, my dad's mother, uh, she passed away. Oh, back in 2009 or anyway, I was in Bible college and I, I was not at that point able to go to the funeral. And, hmm. um, I, I actually had a difficult time processing and dealing with it because I was not able to, whereas yeah. a few years later, my mom's mother uh, passed passed on, and I was able to go to the service and the funeral, and it it was much easier for me to process that and uh, deal with that. You know, I found myself I just kind of pushed it down with my dad's mom, but it it was even a year later that I found that there were things that I just hadn't dealt with because of that fact. Mm -hmm because that I, I hadn't yeah. been there for a funeral service. Yeah, I, I think I think the probably the worst thing someone could do as far as showing love to those who are departed, showing love to the others that are also suffering from the loss, um, and for yourself just generally is to not take a moment and actually process through the grief. Now, I would like to add, Aaron, that... Um, in our in our culture, and by culture I mean our American, you know, Midwest culture. So maybe things are a little different in different parts of our country or different parts of the world. So I respect that. But in our culture, um, showing an appropriate level of grief externally is different than the grief you would show yourself internally as well. Because as we know, uh, God says that we have internal behavior that only he can see and external behavior that others can observe as well. And so um, in that internal behavior, there, there may be a high level of grief experience that you're processing through and those inner thoughts um, and thinking through and feeling through those emotions that you would have. And then in an external sense, um, you're displaying behavior that other people can see. And I would say that in our modern culture, in the way that would be most helpful to the most people and in our the way that we deal with things now um, is for us to express that grief. Crying would be appropriate, but also to express strength as well. Um, I remember my my grandpa's funeral which which was pretty pretty intense i'm not gonna lie i inside i felt felt <laughs> i felt uh pretty pretty intense emotional responses because he was very very valuable to me as a person um but at that funeral i had my kids there i had my mom there who's just lost her dad and she's feeling everything and my, my grandma there just lost her husband. They've been married for over 50 years. It's really tough. And it, it would not have been right for me in that moment at that funeral to have like lost control and, and expressed the intensity of the emotions that I felt. And, and that's because, not because I didn't feel that way, but because I had other people looking to me. I had my kids looking to me. I had my mom looking to me. Um, aunts and uncles, my grandma. They're, they're seeing me. I'm standing there in front of them. And if I lose control and I lose my cool, that's not helpful to them. No. It, it only makes their grief worse. And so I did cry, of course. Um but I, I remained as stoic as I could in the face of that pain. And I did that so my kids could see that we can be strong 
and that my wife would see that and, and my family would see, hey, even though this really hurts and this is really bad, we can be strong and we can we can survive the suffering and have strength and trust that we will make it through. So when we talk about dealing rightly with the emotions that we're feeling, see, I'm tearing up again just thinking about it because honestly, and, there's you some... know, as I know, you you talked to me earlier uh, about it too, but you know, like you say, when you were in the funeral and uh, surrounded by loved ones, you you showed strength, but it's a different story when you're in an appropriate setting where you're by yourself or, yeah. or maybe you know with a you know your yeah. wife or something, but you know to to cry yeah. and, and let uh, it out it's absolutely so okay and important um, to do that i think i don't know that a lot of people have heard this story from me um but the night that uh my grandfather died i actually did get a phone call with him from the hospital um and he could barely talk um but we kind of got to say our goodbyes and after that phone call um, I was not strong or stoic. I was alone. Actually, it was in, in the house here um, in the same room where we have the studio now. Um, when I was alone, I was very expressive of that grief. Um, but at, at the funeral with family, um, I was feeling those feelings, but I, I knew I needed to be different externally so when we're talking about processing grief and dealing with grief and i know, I know we kind of don't have a ton of time left on yeah on the clock uh, here, but, real quick i did um, want to get to uh, another verse that talked about this yeah and then we can move yeah on. and i, I might have jumped the gun and put it up early <laughs> sorry everybody uh <laughs> was that the the john verse? John 11 okay yeah let's jump that up there um or or the powerpoint's going to crash on me and I'm not going to have it. <laughs> Give me one second, Pastor Aaron. I'll try <laughs> try again. But so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. And I'll see well, if what I wanted to bring out and look at was if we're talking about grief and how a Christian should deal with grief, uh, I think let, let's go to Jesus and see what his example was. And so in John eleven thirty three through 36, it says that this is when Lazarus had died. And Jesus was was coming, and Jesus had gotten word that he was going to die, that he was sick, and Jesus waited and allowed him to die, and so Jesus comes. So if you want to bring it back up, we'll get to it now. Sure. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and tr and was troubled. That's a, an accurate way of describing grief that he felt. And said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Now, this is what I like to come to a lot of when a lot of people say, No, nope, as a Christian, you shouldn't cry, you shouldn't be sad. Jesus was sad. When Lazarus right. died, Jesus wept. Even though Jesus knew that in a moment he was going to raise him from the dead. And then in, yeah. in the last verse, verse 36, exactly what you and I have been talking about, the grief is an expression of love and value for someone. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. Right. Yeah. And and Aaron, I I think I would love to add to that, that it, it just shows that even it always threw me. OK, it always threw me like, why would Jesus cry? He's all powerful and all knowing, and he knew he was going to resurrect him. So why would he cry, right? And it just goes to show that the loss causes causes the grief to occur. The loss is something of value, and and Jesus, even though he knew he would bring him back, that grief still was triggered there as a re, it's that reflex of of grief when the the loss was done and then he was able to go and act on on that with uh w you know the uh bringing him back from the dead so that was fa right. a fantastic miracle um but let me let me uh go ahead here i'll bring the powerpoint back up and we can summarize because we, we are running out of time here to yeah. close um but we, 
we wanted to talk about lastly third was how should we respond to grief yeah and i think we kind of hit that a little bit with the discussions and stories yeah, um but yeah um why do we experience grief we experience grief because we value someone who is lost and how should we grieve um well first off we should grieve and we should make sure to uh, grieve in a way that is internally honest with the loss that we've had and externally strong for those that we um, are having an influence over. And then we, well, go ahead. You take the last one. How should we respond to grief? And how we respond to grief. What, what is it that we, we deal, how we deal with that in our person and the way we live our lives? And one of the things, you know, as we wrap it up here, we need to make sure that we do grieve, but we also need to make sure that it's not something that takes over our life and that we we let that become what we focus on for the rest of our lives. And so, uh, you know, God is very clear in, in Matthew, Jesus says, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. That's right. And, and we do have that great blessing from being Christians and recognizing that when we've lost a Christian loved one, we will see them again. It's, it, it is actually a great comfort that we, we should rely on and, and trust and be thankful to God over that we do have that. And that's just a wonderful thing. Well, Aaron, we really are pushing the limit on time today, so we better wrap things up. Um, do you have a final challenge for us today? Well, normally I like to give a practical challenge, but uh, in grief, I, I guess what I want to leave us with is it's okay. It's okay to experience grief. It's okay to mourn. And it's okay to be sad. And and when we grieve the loss of a loved one, especially as a believer, we we should know it's okay, one, to be happy for our loved one that they're in a better place, and two, to be sad for us because we're going to miss them. Thanks, Pastor Aaron. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you for joining us for Finding the Point today. We did do this special episode, um, and I hope that it does help those of you who are out there and experiencing some of these challenges right now. Uh, please like our videos and share them with others. Our producer does say sharing works the best to get the word out, and he showed me the analytics. He's not kidding. So please share this right now and help others with their grief today, too. Uh, thank you, guys. This has been Finding the Point. Have a great day.